Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of what we call, another spontaneous edition of what we call the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the gatekeeper, the host of this program, known here on social media, wherever you may find me, I am known as the mighty, 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 mm, angel snubbed up seven, I am your soul brother, number one. I just wanted to, uh, well, let me acknowledge the, the, the uh, Deacons of Reality. Soul Brother 85, Twin Pyramid in the house, as always. Thank you, brothers. Appreciate it. <clears throat> um, I just want to make a quick commentary. And uh, I don't really live like in the black community, sort of mixed, but the majority of people here are uh, soul brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I guess it was a lot of Caucasians who couldn't afford to, to, to move or something. <laughs> they got stuck here and it's a few other people. But primarily it's a it's a lot of soul brothers and sisters in this uh, in this neighborhood, in this community. But we're right next door to the white community. So you, you will see a lot of Caucasian people going back and forth. But I was just taking a walk a few days ago in the neighborhood and uh, as you know brothers and sisters a lot of us we got loud mouths. We talk loud, like me. I talk loud. In certain, not all the time. You hear brothers and sisters telling their business in the public, their own personal business out on the streets. And you hear a lot of what's going on. As I was taking my walk, <laughs> it was a brother smoking a cigarette. And he said, hey, OG, I got some weed for you. I got some weed for you, OG. He got some weed for me. But he don't have a good word that will uplift his community. Except I got some weed for you. This goes to show you where their mind is at. You got some drink for me. Or you got a pair of panties for me. That's all you have to offer anybody. Now these are the adults. In, in my community. In this community. On the local news. Within the last few days. Teenagers. Have been killing teenagers. Here. In fact. A mother. A mother took her son to a fight and then she tried to record the fight. Her son went to the car where he knew the mother had a gun, grabbed the gun and killed another teenager. The mother took the son to the fight. Can you imagine? Come on, son, we're going to go to the, we're going to go to this fight. I'm, I'm going to take you there. I don't get a call and say my son is in trouble. Come help your son. No, I'm going to take you so you can become and start the fight. But for me, I'm not shocked. I'm not surprised. Why are we shocked? Why are we surprised when we live in a cesspool? Why are we looking and always thinking about how wonderful and beautiful things are? We live in a cesspool. You stink. If you take a bath in feces, you smell like doo doo. We live in a doo doo country. There's nothing clean about it. Teenagers shooting each other, it's no shock. 
A young man asking an older man, hey, OG, you want some weed? That's not a shock. Pushing an old man in front of a car is not a shock. We live in the United States of America with all the churches, with all the mosques, with all the religion in this country. And I don't care where you live. They always tell me, look at all the churches in the black community. I don't care where you go, I'm a truck driver. Wherever you go, there's a church, there's a mosque. It's a lot of religion on every damn corner. But look at the condition of the country. Look how childish our politicians are. They childish. So I'm looking at the people in the community and folks always ask me what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do a damn thing. That's not my job. I'm not responsible for grown ass people. And it's not like they don't know any better. This is their life, like my mother say. My mother says it's easy to be ignorant. If it took a college degree to be stupid, we would be intelligent. It's easy to be food. Why do you think they turn to drugs? Why do you think they turn to alcohol? Why do you think they turn to religion? Because you're stupid. And you're illiterate. You can't think for yourself. So all these things are escapism. The pornography. You can't take care of no babies. You can't nurture no babies. All you can do is get your dang line and swing around and your little putty tack and y'all can have a lot of fun. Because these are children. An adult understands that children are not the fun. They play with these children like they Barbie doll. And that Barbie doll movie was uh, nominated for an Oscar. Why the hell would adults go crazy over a damn Barbie doll picture? Because they are children. And their children are Barbie doll and Ken. Action figures. So the children have no parents. Whether you are rich or poor, the children don't have any parents. We are in a childlike environment. And the government, who should be the example for the people, are a bunch of idiots. How do you solve your problem? Let's drop bombs on people. How do you solve your problem? Let's slander and gossip. This is how the adults do. So why are you shocked because of the teenager murdering another, another teenager? They bullying each other. Because the adults do the same thing. Let's give more money to the war. To Israel. Let's give more money to Ukraine. Let's keep all this going. Let us fund the violence. You're going to pay for the violence. Because you have people that need to sell. Their weapons of violence. You cannot sell weapons of violence in peace. Somebody got to be killing somebody as long as it's not me. So let me sell some bombs. Let me sell some drones. Let me sell some weapons of violence to these people I don't really give a damn about. Let them kill each other, murder each other, destroy their property. Then these dumb asses, they turn around and rebuild the place that they just destroyed is stupid. It's stupid. And 
when you're dealing with illiterate people, you got all this violence, all this, you're surrounded by all this madness. And the neighborhood don't care. Involved in their own personal foolishness, their own personal violence, and slander and gossip. Why would anybody want to live as long as possible to be in this garbage? I'm a hundred years old. You a hundred years old living in a cesspool. That ain't nothing to brag about. You live a long time trying to avoid being murdered, being slandered, being a victim, being exploited, being a damn slave. So you want somebody to give you an award because you was able to make a hundred years old living in the cesspool. So what? That ain't nothing to brag about. The average adult does nothing to try to make the condition better. So they just join the party. Let me go get a gun. Let me go get a knife. Let me go get a baseball bat. Let me do nothing. That's their children. I don't give a damn about their children. Then their children turn around and rob your damn house. But the only thing you had to do was be kind and give a young boy, a young girl, pay them to cut your grass or something, do something nice for them. Oh, well, we can't do that to so-and-so. They was nice to me. We are, we, so they become your damn enemy. Turn your back, they steal your car. We are in a messed up situation and we don't want to deal with the reality of our life. These in the community don't give a damn right now. They, they don't care because it does, it, it's not hurting them. It's not hurting them enough. They cry a little bit, but it's not hurting. Do you know that the reason why our people rose up in the 60s because they was hurting, hurting for real. Even in the 70s, even in the early 80s, we hurting so we rise up and stay up. But these are comfortable. Get they are so happy they legalize marijuana. Oh, oh, happy day, oh, happy day. Oh, as soon as I get out of church, I'm going to get me some weed. Woo, praise Jesus. As soon as I get out of the mosque, woo, Allah Akbar. What brings me to this talk is a documentary I saw during my lifetime. I saw it in real time. I saw the election of Harold Washington, the first black mayor of Chicago. And what I noticed about the, uh, the documentary they did not mention Minister Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam in this documentary. And we were helping, I'm very sure, I don't really remember, but I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure we was helping promote, we, we endorsed and we was trying to help get this man, Harold Washington, as mayor. Now, mind you, how Washington didn't want to do it. He had my attitude. How Washington was a, I think he was a state senator. He was a state senator rising in the ranks up and wanting to go to Congress and all that kind of, what do you need to be a mayor for? That's like a, that's, that's like a, a downgrade. That's not a promotion. That's a demotion. 
And he didn't want nothing to do with it. The people got so angry. They needed to find a hero. They needed to find somebody that they could trust. That they could support. That they hope could help change their condition. I would hope that you would go and Google or go to the YouTube search and find a documentary on Hal Washington so that you would understand where I'm coming from. I can't, I can't, I'm not going to go through the history of Hal Washington. I'm just going to, I just want to focus for a few minutes why I believe that Hal Washington would endorse our vision of Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign. Now, Hal Washington had a rough first term. And he really was getting ready to do some things when he was elected the, for his second term. But it was reported that he had a heart attack. And so, of course, that could not be done. Now, the thing about this, Hal Washington was reported to to weigh almost 300 some pounds and of course some people just don't they, they just don't take care of their health uh, the director the director of uh, higher learning the director of uh, what's that other movie uh, boys in the hood John Singleton with all his money still did not take care of his, of his health and John Singleton died from heart disease I think it was a heart attack or something like that. So we know that you can die from a heart attack. Anybody can die from a heart attack. Uh, young people can die from a heart attack. We can die from almost anything. However, at the same time, we know that when you are in a position like how Washington was, you can get shot with a drug that will make it look like you died from a heart attack and you didn't. There are drugs, even gases, that you can breathe in and drugs that can make a person look like they died from a heart attack and they didn't. So Harold Washington could have been assassinated. And we have to put that on the table because we know that in this nation, they believe in assassination. They will kill you. You know and I know that there are a lot of people, Caucasian people in Chicago, that did not like the fact that Harold Washington was mayor of Chicago. So we must take that in consideration. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a reality for us. Medgar Evers was assassinated. Malcolm X was assassinated. Dr. King was assassinated. And a lot of our people wish they was beat up so damn bad, they wish they was assassinated. Sometimes our own people plan to kill us. So this is not a conspiracy theory. You don't always have to kill somebody with a bullet. There's radioactive gas and different kinds of other ways that you can murder people now. You can send the gas through the vent, through the circulation system, and murder people. People always think about a bullet. You don't have to, you don't have to die by a bullet. So, Harold Washington could have been assassinated. You cannot, we cannot take that off the table. Now, again, Harold Washington didn't want nothing to do with being the mayor of Chicago. I'm fine doing what I'm doing. I'm going to do what's best for me.
And they really wanted Harold because out, out of all the candidates, just like Dr. King, they, they looked at all the candidates, put it on the table. Harold, you, you, you got to be the one. And so Harold said, well, if I'm the one, what you going to do for me? Because the way Harold look at it, black people, soul brothers, since we have this track record of people putting their lives on the line and folks sacrificing, and they don't do it there. You don't, they, don't, they won't back you up like that. And Harold wasn't going for it. He said, he said, how do I know they serious? See, that's the key. How do I know they serious? Why should I, why should I sacrifice myself? How do I know they serious? So Harold told the committee, those who were trying to recruit him to be the mayor of Chicago, he told them, look, I want $100,000. I believe that's what it was. He said, I want $100,000 and I want the people to sign a petition. I forgot how many thousands he wanted. If you can give me the $100,000, if you can get this amount of people to sign this petition, I will be your man. I will stop doing what I'm doing and I will sacrifice and I will gamble with y'all and I'll be your candidate for the mayor of Chicago. You got to be worthy. And that's what I say about myself. You got to prove to me and show me that you're worthy. That you're serious. That's why I started thinking about the Mississippi campaign and how we talk here. Harold Washington was thinking, talking the same way. I'm not going to put myself out of here. You, you got to be worthy. They got to prove that they're serious. They show that, they, that you're serious and I'll do it. I never said I wouldn't put myself out there. I said you're not worthy. You got to prove that you're serious. There was a lot of, there was a lot of murder by the police in Chicago. There was a lot of discrimination. There was a lot of black people in Chicago at the time. They was catching so much hell. I, I, I got to change this. So they began recruiting people to vote. And some of the Caucasian people in Chicago were so confident about winning. They said, black folks, they don't vote anyway. They don't vote, so what? They don't, they don't even want to listen to what you got to say. They don't, they don't vote. Now, the black conscious community would tell us, don't vote. Sit on your ass and don't do nothing. That's what the black conscious community, voting don't mean nothing. But the white folks are saying, why should I listen to you? You don't vote anyway. But it was the vote, it was the politics that put Harold Washington as mayor. It is, it is the vote, it is the politics that put any black person in office anywhere around this country. Unless a president puts you in a position. It is the vote. It is, that's your power. They were able to put Harold Washington in the mayor's office one vision, one purpose, one goal. We do it all the same. Of course you got, you're going to have black folks that still voted for the white folks, but in Chicago Harold Washington said he told the black audience, soul brothers and sisters in Chicago it's too many of us for me not to be mayor. I'm going to be mayor if you want me to be mayor. The only reason why I'm not going to be mayor is because you didn't, we didn't vote. They wasn't serious. You did not hurt enough. 
You still trust your massa. They rose up. And there was many brothers and sisters that never voted for I didn't even live in Chicago. And I wanted to vote for Harold Washington. Harold Washington was the only person I ever really wanted to vote for. I couldn't vote for Harold Washington. I could have voted for Jesse Jackson. I didn't like Jesse like that. When I saw Jesse Jackson on Saturday Night Live, I stopped, I stopped looking at him seriously. What the hell are you doing on Saturday Night Live? I thought you was this activist. And you on, you making jokes and having fun on Saturday Night Live. At one time, Jesse was the leader. Contrary to popular belief. At one time, Jesse was the man to go to. Contrary to popular belief. It's not something that I believe. I lived it. And those who lived it, they know. It was all about Jesse Jackson at one time. And then slowly coming up the ranks came Al Sharpton. And Louis Farrakhan was coming up in the grassroots. Jesse put Louis Farrakhan on the map. It was not Allah. It was not just the teachers. Jesse did it. Farrakhan grabbed Jesse Jackson's coattail because Jesse Jackson was known and viewed as a national leader, Louis Farrakhan was grassroots. Even though Farrakhan attracted thousands of people to his meeting, nobody really cared about Farrakhan till he got together on a national scale with Jesse Jackson. This, that's a fact. I lived it. Ain't nothing that I believe. And then Farrakhan turn around, talk about the man like a dog, like he he knows it, he knows everything better. He's better than Jesse. Every time you see Farrakhan in a conference with Jesse, he always puffing his chest out. I'm smarter than Jesse. I'm whatever. If it wasn't for Jesse, yo, nobody would even know your ass. Now you know it's pitiful when you can attract thousands of people to your meeting. But as far as on a national level, nobody gave a damn about you. They didn't care about Louis Farrakhan. Nobody cared about that nation of, of Islam stuff. That's, that was dead. And then when Farrakhan started rising up, he brought all this pro-black conscious stuff up. They don't want to give Farrakhan credit for that. I know because I lived it. I saw it in real time. Nobody didn't give a damn about Kemet and the Hebrew Israelite and all this other Black Panther. Nobody didn't give a damn about none of that stuff until Louis Farrakhan got on the national stage and start rising and start attracting people with his talk. And some people will even tell you, I used to listen to Farrakhan back in the day. They will even tell you, I listened to Farrakhan. That's who started that got it all this black conscious stuff i would call louis farrakhan the father of black modern day black conscious he's the one that kicked it all off give the man the credit i don't never i don't i can criticize louis farrakhan but i can also give him credit because i know it would be unjust it would not be right not to give that man his credit i would not be talking to you if it was not for Louis Farrakhan. I, 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 chances are the probability is very, very low. So give the man the credit. You don't have to like him. Which I don't have no, I don't have no uh, hate or dislike. I just say what I have to say about a behavior. I say what I have to say about a teaching. I've never made a video say I hate the nation of Islam. I never made a video say I hate the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and all this sinister minister and all these old corny ass names. All these people talking this crap. If it wasn't for Farrakhan, your ass wouldn't be active right now. We're going to call it for what it is. I 
would not be talking to you if it was not for that man. And at the time, he was the best thing going. But that time is gone. So this reminds me of, of the Mississippi campaign. And I understand that the only way that the Mississippi campaign can get going and moving the way it needs to be going, the people have to be angry. And they're not angry. The black conscious community is not angry. Everybody is happy in their little space. That's why nothing is happening. Because everybody is comfortable in their space. Those people in Chicago, the purpose was to elect this man as mayor. They came together, Muslim, agnostic, atheist, gay. It didn't make no difference. I'm black. We gonna vote and get this man into office so he can help us. And that's the same type of mentality you have to have for the Mississippi campaign. We need this, the power of this state. We need to control this state for ourselves. And the Muslim and the agnostic and the Hebrew and the comedic and the Christian, whoever, Matter of fact, there were white folks that supported Harold Washington. There are Caucasians, there are Arabs, there are Chinese that will support the Mississippi campaign. Because even though, just like putting Harold Washington, Harold Washington is the mayor of Chicago. Look, I'm gonna get out of here. Harold Washington is the mayor of Chicago. He's not the mayor of black people in Chicago. Harold Washington was the mayor of Chicago, meaning he represented looking out for the welfare of all the citizens. It just so happened, but why do we need, why do we need a Harold Washington? We need a Harold Washington because we got a group of citizens that is not being respected, not being treated like a citizen. That's why we need a Harold Washington. And the other citizen shouldn't have no problem with that. They shouldn't have no problem with it. So you are wanting to take control of Mississippi. It's not a black state. It's not your own independent nation and all that dumb stuff. You want to take control of Mississippi so you can be in a, a position so finally Government can benefit you because we have been denied. This is not to take away from the citizens of Mississippi. This is what you have to understand. Shout out to our big brother, the MD-20. And this is what the Mississippi campaign is about. Those people in Chicago was hungry. They was tired of getting beat up and murdered and exploited and discriminated against. Nationally, we are not that way. We're comfortable. We're comfortable because many of us, we, I mean, we're, we're living pretty good. We have more than two. We have more than one car in, in the driveway. You got degrees on the wall. I mean, we're doing pretty well. You, you smoke all the weed that you want to. You, you, you don't feel nothing. But if you, just like Malcolm said, if you truly want to change your condition, you got to get angry and you got to stay angry until you accomplish, at least until you can accomplish your goal. Our current YouTube personalities, our current leadership have no vision, have no goal, they have no purpose. They just, it's just a church. So you can feel good because you're comfortable. You're not suffering. 
You want to hear a good word, take your ass home and get drunk. Get drunk off religious teaching, get drunk off weed, get drunk off pornography or whatever, whatever you choose or just watching cable TV, whatever your lazy ass want to do. So who is looking out for your children future? These adults aren't doing nothing for the future of their children. I love my great. No, you're a damn liar. You sit on your ass and you watch the housewives of, of Atlanta. You're doing nothing to make the life of your future children that you will never see make their life better. And you are so-called adult. You're not. That's why I tell you, these people aren't adults. They are called adults by default. Just like we're called men by default. We're called men because we have a penis. We're not acting like full functioning men and women. We're not acting like adults. We're acting like children playing with Barbie doll. The MD20 says these neo Negroes want to replace one form of oppression with another. Exactly. That's all. All they want to do is change slave masters. That's all they want to do. That's why they don't like Angel Snuffin' Up 7. Because I represent us taking our, really taking our destiny in our own hands. We don't have AK-47. We don't have any tanks. We don't have fighter jets. But what we do have is our brain. I heard somewhere that brain always triumph over brawn. That's what I heard. So, so I don't care how bad America is. I don't care how tough America is. Use your brain over their brawn. In martial arts, they teach us about weak spots. I don't care how big and bad America is, it has a weak spot. And for me, this is the best time to get down because they got so much stuff going on with them. They're not even paying attention. They really don't even talk about us like that no more. They talking about the Ukraine and Russia and uh, North Korea and 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 Iraq and Afghanistan and, 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 and the, the immigrants coming. They got they talking about a whole they don't even talk about us like that no more. Not even paying no attention. This is the reason why it's time to strike. Just like in boxing. And you put your what up and then you wait when he when your opponent put his guard down just a bit, then that's when you strike pop. You can do it. But this is what made me want to talk about that because it reminds me of the Mississippi campaign. I'm not going to stick my neck out for people. Harold Washington said, if these people are not serious, I'm not doing it. So I'm not going to do a damn thing for black people. They're not serious. Why should you go out here and I sacrifice my life, my little money, for these ingrates. I'm not going to do it. But they're comfortable. That's why. They're comfortable. They got to hurt. You don't understand. That you're in a, posi a better position. When you're not hurting. When you don't really have to struggle like that. It makes it harder and more difficult. When, you, when you're forced to do it. And I'm going to say this and get out of here. The thing about Harold Washington, the thing about our sister Fannie Lou Hamer in Mississippi and a lot of our movements is that when the leader dies, when Harold Washington died, that which was created to put him into office, that mindset, it died with him. This is where we make our mistake. 
So you cut off. The thing about us is the enemy understands that if they cut off our head, the body falls. And that should not be so. How many presidents have this nation had? America still on and popping. How many presidents that lived and died in America and this country, it don't stop. It keeps rolling. When somebody die in our family or die in our movements, that's the end. We start scattering. We don't know what to do. The buck stops here because the Mississippi campaign, everybody gonna know what to do even the children. So even if every adult died, the children said, this is what we're going to do. This is what we need to do and keep rolling. It's not going to stop. We might have to wait till we get grown, but this train keep on on the tracks because we know what to do. Because the Mississippi campaign is about the creation of leaders not one divine person. The Mississippi campaign is about learning. About knowing. Now, you can believe whatever you want to. That's your business. But this is about keeping this train on the track. This is about the continuation of moving forward. And you get better and better. I'm telling you, we are the catalyst to show the world what human beings really should be. We can do that. Let me see. Uh, MD said, though we may not agree totally with the ultimate goal of Operation Exodus Mississippi. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can see that again. <laughs> it's really hard to say, okay. Okay, let me see. Okay. Though we may not agree totally with the ultimate goal of Operation... This, oh, let's keep jumping because we keep... <laughs> I might not be able to re read the comment. Okay, MD says, Though we may not agree totally with the ultimate goal of Operation Exodus Mississippi... <laughs> We agree that the campaign exists to change the condition of the American freedmen, soul people, or the foundation of black America. Exactly. Though the condition changes for the people, my destiny is not tied to yours, neither yours to mine. Free your mind. I, I want to say, I want to say this. Actually, that's not true. That, actually, that's not true. Because we're connected as, we are connected in this group. So, we're connected. Within, within the freedom or the liberation, we travel our own Pass because you might want to operate a trucking company and I just want to lay on my ass and watch TV. But in order for us to get, for us to be liberated, in order for us to change our condition, we, we all share the same destiny, the same goal. So we're still connected. We're connected. Like every American, all white folks, their answers, they all connected, but they all doing their own separate things in this nation. And if, it, and if this nation falls, they all fall because they're connected. They are what makes this nation operate. Even though folks are doing separate things, are doing their own individual whatever. When you attack this country, and your sons and your daughters die on the battlefield. We're all connected defending this nation. And if this nation fall, our 
we all fall because that's how the, the destiny of the nation the, of the nation fall. I could be in error. I could be in error. But we're connected like that. We're, co we're connected. We're tied together. Because we suffer together. How are we going to how why are we connected and tied together in suffering? But now that we're liberated, now everybody go there and say, you, you're going to end up screwed up again. Because the unity being tied together is what makes you strong. Like how these people did in this nation and anywhere on the planet where they founded a nation or a large tribe. And I don't know the ultimate goal of Operation Action in Mississippi is just to be a, a citizen living in this country being finally being in a position so that you can finally take advantage of what it is to be a citizen in this country. MD said, I can partially agree with that. To me, the goal is to achieve and maintain freedom. That's a collective action, but freedom and liberation in itself is a single mindset. It cannot be. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know what you're talking about, but freedom and liberation itself is a single mindset. I don't know. Folks just don't. I don't know. Folks just don't. Folks have a, a separation mindset. The Negro has a separation mindset because nobody can tell me what to do. But your ass lay up in America and these people, you better stop at that stop sign. You better go to school, at least to high school, go get you some kind of education. You sit around here and you will and you obey their laws. And it would be no different with us. You still, no matter what you do, there's laws to obey. There's foundations to obey. There has to be, if you don't have that, if you don't have that, you have chaos. You've got to have some kind of law and order. But you want justice. You want law and order to be fair. You don't want law and order to be discriminatory. <laughs> MD said, it's okay to leave Gracia. <laughs> oh, wow. Mississippi campaign is not about what I want personally. Because if I wanted to be out here for what I wanted personally, I would ask nobody to do a damn thing. I'll be out here working for what I want personally. I don't give a damn about what you do or what happened to you. I'm just going to take care of mine. So the Mississippi campaign, since it is founded upon what is in the best interest of the people, then it's going to be designed and maintained by the people that must have respect for the different ideals and the, diff the variety of us, of us as a people as the United States is. What you do personally in the nation, that's your business. I'm talking about the government. The government should be formed so it so it is just to the people. I don't care if you go to the mosque or the synagogue or wherever you whatever you do. That's not my business. That's your own personal crap. I'm talking about when it comes to the law. If you run a red light, everybody get a ticket. There's no, no nobody gets special favors. I don't give a damn if you rich. Oh, no special favors here. But we gotta, I know for us in this country, black people in this country, and I know that a lot of folks 
when they hear about the Mississippi campaign, because the Mississippi campaign is nothing but what we have experienced in this nation. The only thing I did was 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 put a plan together using the same attitude, the same mold that our people been using ever since they came off the slave plantation. So if you have a problem with the Mississippi campaign, you got a problem with your ancestors. Then you turn around, oh, I love them. I know you are a damn lie. You don't love no ancestors. You don't give a damn about the ancestors because the only thing the Mississippi campaign is about the action that our ancestors was doing. Even when it came to the activity they did in recent times with the election of of uh, Harold Washington. The state of Mississippi, we have enough bodies we could take control of that state. I know we could do it. You don't want to do it. Because Minister Farrakhan don't get the credit. Because Marcus Garvey don't get the credit. Because Allah can't get the credit. Well, I don't give a damn who get the credit. Just do it. You don't have to mention my name. I heard somebody say, I'm going to do the Mississippi campaign. I don't see them doing a damn thing. It's a lot of work. And the people don't can't get on board the train because they're comfortable. That's the main problem. You're comfortable. You have, I, I don't, so you can say, I don't need Snub Nup. I don't need Tariq Machine. I don't need Farrakhan. I don't need, you don't need nobody because you're comfortable. Those people in Chicago didn't have that attitude. They understood we need every vote we can get. And they got enough and they changed. They changed Chicago history. But they could not maintain it because the leader or the head died. And so that whole mindset, the attitude, it died with him. The Mississippi campaign is not like that. Those who are leading the charge, all of us could die. But everybody, every baby, if your dog can understand, your dog will keep, keep it moving. Because it's about leaders. It's about making full functioning adults. And unfortunately for our children, they got to grow up because we at war. Just like during the Vietnam War, Korean War, or even those wars in Africa, they put guns and weapons in the hands of children. It's that time. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when you throw down, teach your baby to throw a bottle. Throw the bottle at the enemy. Everybody's got to get down. Because this is war. But when you're comfortable, <laughs> you're not serious. <laughs> Dickens said, do you believe OEM OEMC should have its own tax? Of course we should have our own tax. You have to fund yourself. We should pay our we should pay people to be our soldiers. And when something go down, you don't have to riot. You sit in your army. Instead of our children going to the white man's army, they should be able, they should be able to come to our military. I ain't talking about no damn FOI. I'm talking about people that can get down. Because you take control of the state of Mississippi, now you actually have some for real weapons you can work with. They have, they have drones. The National Guard has drones. They have tanks. They got all kinds of stuff. The Mississippi National Guard. You, you take control of Mississippi, 
you are in control of the Mississippi version of the FBI. All this power, you ain't never had no power like this before. Never. Our people in the past was children. They didn't know what they was really doing. They never fought a government before. They don't know the coin tail pro. They never dealt with nobody like J. Edgar Hoover. They didn't know. They didn't know. But now we learn from their mistakes. We learn from their success and we learn from their failure. All of us have contribution. The only thing you're doing is put it under one umbrella. That's the only thing. Find your place and let's go forward. Find your place and go. That's what they did in Chicago to elect Harold Washington. Folks found their place. Even if it was just a, all thing I'm going to do is vote. Uh, what are you going to do? Find your place so we can get this man in office. Find your spot so we can accomplish this. You accomplish this, woo! You ain't never had that kind of power. And when you get that power, that influence in your hand for the first time, you're going to be saying, damn! We could have done this long time ago. This feels good. And you'll look at yourself. Look what we accomplished. When people cross over the Mississippi line and they see what you done done. They're going to say, wow. California, I want to be like Mississippi. Idaho going to say, I want to be like Mississippi. Colorado, I want to be like Mississippi. If you are God, if you are as intelligent as you claim you are, then show them how it's done. Run in your mouth, feel good speech. Ain't nobody impressed by that. Show me what you can do. Uh, Muhammad Ali, that's why they hated Muhammad Ali. Because not only did Muhammad Ali say and talk a bunch of crap, but he proved it. Float like a butterfly, staying like a bee. He proved it. Anybody can run their mouth, show and prove. If you God, then you said let there be light, and the light comes on. Right now, you just a bunch of talk. There ain't nobody impressed by your talk. You're not even impressed by your talk. You got to make it real. And that was the problem with me as I was maturing. When I was 18, 19 years old, I tolerated the talk. I really didn't like it, but I tolerated it because things take time. But as 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 time progressed, I'm like, this ain't going nowhere. I'm putting in all this work. The only person that I saw that was benefiting was the leaders, Minister Farrakhan. I, I wasn't getting nothing. My temple wasn't getting nothing. My community wasn't getting nothing. Hell no. I'm not doing this no more. Farrakhan made a speech talking about the big, the big, the, 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 the mega churches. Then he turned right around and do the same thing. He could have took that money and we could have opened up small mom and pop stores in, in St. Louis and, and, and New York and Los Angeles. Oh no, I, he, he going to take the money and build him, build, get an old property worth nothing because my church property has no real value. It don't make no money. Church property beg for money, take money. It don't make any money. Burger King make money. McDonald's make money. A factory makes money. Those types of buildings make money. 
Churches and mosques don't make no damn money. They take, they beg. And if you got it going on like that, if you open up enough businesses and your businesses are successful, you really don't even have to beg because your businesses is making enough revenue, they support your mosque. You don't have to do all that damn begging. Actually, Haiti could benefit from Operation Exodus Mississippi campaign to found. They actually could. But it's a mindset that you have to have. I think the people of Haiti probably would embrace it, but they would have to understand in order for you to get, get there. There's a mindset because really taking control of Mississippi, that's really the easy part. The difficult part is, okay, you, you accomplish this, how, what you gonna do now? You got control, now what you gonna do? How you gonna maintain it? How are you gonna make, how are you going to make a poverty-stricken state how are you going to make that into a wealthy state? Easier said than done. But it can be done if you are in your right state of mind, if you understand if you're in your right state of mind. And do what you claim you said that you can do. You a God and you a warrior and you so smart and you are you the original man and you you can you created the earth and the sun and all this other stuff, but you can't control a state. That don't even make any sense. Make it make sense. You the original man with all this power, so you claim, and you don't control a neighborhood. You don't control a neighborhood, you don't control a town. You don't control the city, you don't control a damn thing. The only thing you are, Mr. Original Man, the only thing you is a Yasa man. Yasa, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop at the stop sign. Yes, sir. I've obeyed the law of, of, of Rome. Give Rome, you know that old saying, give Rome what, what, what Rome won't and give God what you know that old corny stuff like that. God is your master, you are somebody always your damn master. Rome is your damn telling you what to do. God telling you what to do. When the hell are you going to be a man and do what you want to do for a change? You got to obey God. You got to obey the devil. You got to obey white folks. You got to obey the Arabs. You got to obey whoever. You always got to obey and bow down to some damn body. Mr. Man. Because you a child. Because you are a slave. And you need somebody to hold your damn hand. You need somebody to guide you because you're not a man. You need, you, you need somebody help. And you, some of these people are actually, they proud to say that. I'm with God. You, you, you saying you need help because you're too pitiful to do anything on your own. That's what you're saying. You're not a man. And, but you want to respect the women. Woo, I'm going to say this. I'm going to get out of here. If you could pull this off do you know what kind of respect that we as brothers what we gonna we would get from our women? Because we some bad mama jam. They said them brothers took control of a state. When you go to Mississippi, they run everything. And they running it right, they running it good. They got the world wanna be like them. They got the world wanting to be like them, not us chasing them. They gonna ask you how they did it, what 
what y'all what y'all been drinking, what you believe. Because I want to do what y'all doing. Now you a leader instead of being a damn servant, a, a follower, always following up somebody's backside. You don't have to tell nobody. You a man. Your actions demonstrate it. Huh, that's what I am. Let there be light. And the light comes on. How you gonna be God and don't have no, can't demonstrate no power? Your power is a, is a speech. A feel good church ass speech. I'm gonna show you my power when you step across the Mississippi line. And our children have the best grade point average in the country. The lowest unemployment, the lowest teenage pregnancy, the longest marriages. You're gonna see what we can do. You do that by unity. You do it by unity. You do it by a drive and a wanting. Because you're not doing it just for yourself. You're doing it for what is in the best interest of the unborn. And the little baby that you just, that was just born yesterday. You're paving the way for them. I don't mind. Giving the rest of my little tiny life, whatever I got left, to help you if you're serious. But if you're not, then I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to Disneyland. <laughs> How you doing that, Talik? <laughs> Why are you at Disneyland, Talik? <laughs> Because my people don't want to do a damn thing. Might as well enjoy myself. Come to Disneyland. Exactly. And I think, and I truly believe, that Donald Trump, out of all the presidents, if you don't get any kind of aid, any kind of assistance, Donald Trump is the one that will give it to you. What the hell do you have to lose? Donald Trump said. What, the, what, what do you have to lose? You don't try everybody else. You keep trying these suckers. And Donald Trump is different than the rest of these, these other creeps. Because he's not a politician like that. Don't have nothing to lose. So, just in case y'all decide to do something I registered to vote for the first time and I'm going to vote for Donald Trump just in case y'all want to do something because it don't make no sense for me to tell you that Donald Trump if he win he would be the best option and I didn't help to vote him I'm going to vote for Donald Trump for us if you want to do something for yourself He's the best option. And see, this is the way it is. If you miss, if you miss your opportunity, then it's gone. You're supposed to be at the bus stop at 725. You don't get there to 735. The bus is gone. We are in a position, we have, we have the education, we have the money, we have the skills. We got everything that we need. You just don't have you just don't have leadership that can give you a vision and a goal, a purpose and a plan. They don't have nothing except talk for you. What they laugh at me, I'm gonna say this, I, I'm, we gonna get out of here. They laugh and they make mockery of the Mississippi campaign. They won't come here and challenge me face to face. Bring their corny uh, 
supposed to be solution. They won't come here. They won't come here and face me. They won't do that. They have no plan to offer. They have nothing. The Mississippi campaign is the most realistic option on the table. There's nothing that can compare. Even by talking, these other people, do they offer you the National Guard? No. Do they offer you an opportunity to control the river and the roads and the Mississippi National Guard and all, all these things? They don't, they don't have nothing to, don't think they can say, we, duh, we should go back to Africa. Duh, duh. You never came from no damn Africa. How you gonna go back to a place you never been? You never been there. The so-called Negro, the foundation of black American, the African American, whatever you want to call us, we ain't never lived in no damn Africa. We've been here for 500 years. And even if we did come from Africa, we are invested in this nation. So we're supposed to give up what our ancestors suffered and died for to go to a place Ain't gonna give us a damn thing. We gotta start all over from scratch. Y'all some damn fools. You damn fool. You gotta start all over from scratch. We've been here for 500 years. You gonna go to Africa just so that you can be under another man law. You ain't gonna run nothing. You don't mean nothing to them. If you can't build something in the country where you have been for 500 years, what makes you think you're going to go to Africa and build a nation? You ain't going to build a damn thing. You're going to build an ass whooping. That's what you're going to get in Africa. Try that stuff. As long as you, they're going to do you the way white folks have done us in this country. Know your place. They're going to tell you the same thing. Know your place. Don't come over here talking about building some nation and all that. They don't want to hear that. Those people are extremely tribal over there. Who led, who led you going to build your independent nation in Africa? Ain't nobody offering you nothing. We are citizens of this country. You're doing nothing illegal to take control of a state. There's nothing illegal about it. And you want to do it where it is just and fair and good for all the citizens. Uh, Denzel said, I'm going to be honest with you. I am on the fence about Trump and Biden. I have been thinking about maybe going to Jewish people for help. I think I'm with the Mississippi campaign for life. <clears throat> this is what I, I say to us. <clears throat> whatever, whatever Whatever tool, whatever opportunity that you have, go for it. Whatever. We can you can have those. You can have those just because just because Trump is the president don't mean that you can't get some some aid from Jewish people, whoever. Do you know? If I was thinking the way these black conscious people, I'd still be locked up. When I was locked up, I talked to anybody that would help me. I ain't trip off that stuff. And guess what? Nobody black was coming to help me. 
They was laughing at me. You gonna die here. <laughs> the white folks was giving me information. They was giving me legal information. They was, they was going into meetings to give me information so that I could counter what they was planning to do against me. The Negro was hearing things wouldn't tell me nothing. That's what they was doing. How are you going to ask a young man? Nobody would adopt, nobody black would adopt you. You in the foster care system. And a decent white couple, even a gay couple adopted you. They paid for your college. They took good care of you. And you're going to go to this black man, you're going to go to this black woman and tell them the white man's the devil and where the hell were you at? I laid up in locked up for 10 years. Where the hell was y'all at? They have something called the black. You, you heard of the yellow pages. They have something called the black pages. Black businesses, lawyers, whatever. The, the black, the black pages. I contacted everybody I could think of in the black pages. They didn't even respond. The Church of Scientology, white people, came to see if they could do something. Nobody black came to do nothing. Even my own damn family. I would rarely see them. I had a sister live right around the damn corner, basically. Didn't see her for two or three years. My family, they wouldn't even bring me. They wouldn't even bring me nothing with my money. I was not broke. I had money in the bank. They wouldn't even bring me, bring me snacks or whatever the hell I wanted with my money. They wouldn't even go in their, in their own pocket. Don't tell me about black folks. All this blackity black stuff. That's why y'all don't have a damn thing. Because y'all fake. Uh, Brother Denzel, you're not saying nothing wrong. You're not saying. When you, when you are in a... Even animals... When animals are trapped, they try all kinds of different ways to try to get out of that trap. The way the black conscious community is programmed, the way the black conscious community is programmed, there's only one way. And clearly, that way don't work. It don't work. It don't work. So why are you still doing it? Because you really don't want to get out of the trap. You comfortable in the trap. That's the reason why. You're comfortable. But I want to use the Harold Washington story because I could see the Mississippi campaign in his words when he, he told them, are you serious? And this is why I know y'all can call some of our people coons and shines and stuff. You can say that all you want to. But I truly feel if they saw us serious about something, they'll help. But they're not going to risk their career and their reputation for a bunch of losers. They're not going to do that. And I don't blame them. Harold Washington said, give me $100,000 and you need to put 
some petition. You need a, a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand, whatever it was, two hundred fifty thousand uh, signatures. You got to show me that y'all serious. You're not these folks not serious. They've turned the struggle into a church. You go listen to your favorite preacher and go back to sleep because you're not serious about nothing. Because when you get serious, things change. Even the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, and I'm going to paraphrase, he said, 50% dissatisfaction causes 50% change. 75% dis dissatisfaction causes 75%. 0 percent dissatisfaction causes 0 percent change. 100 percent dissatisfaction causes a change. 100 percent change. There has been no 100 percent change because you're not dissatisfied. You're comfortable. And that's why there has not been any change. I work with people that get angry because of something I said or what I've done. Baby stuff, little, little tiddly wink stuff, nothing stuff. And they mad and angry because you're a child. See, we're dealing with children. I keep telling you, we're not dealing with men and women. You're dealing with, with people that's called men and women by default. We're dealing with children. We're dealing with children. And that's why adults, I didn't even, I didn't even see, I didn't even hear, I could be in error because I don't keep it with this stuff. Uh, I didn't even see children doing a, a whole lot of hoop or holler about the Barbie movie. It was adults. I saw adults wearing all the pink and I'm like, damn, what's up with this Barbie movie? Because we're there, the, the nation is a nation of children. It made a lot of money, the Barbie movie. So you don't get me frustrated. I'm not angry with you nothing. I know that you're children. But whether you stay a child or one day you grow up, I got to keep doing me because my self-appointed mission is to continue to bring this message. You can stay a child if you want. And maybe the right person who is not childish, who's out here looking, they will find it like, wow, that's it. Like Malcolm did. So on that note. We're going to get out of here. I only want. It never. <laughs> it never fails. I only wanted to do. 20 minutes. 30 minutes at the max. We done done triple. I, it never fails. It, it never fails. But I, I, I assume what needs to be said needs to be said. Uh, I did. I'm going to go live uh, maybe sometime this weekend or maybe sometime during the week. I did have um, I had five topics that I wanted to talk about. I was going to make small videos, but I decided just to talk about just to bring these topics together like on a fire chat or something and just knock them all out in, in a live instead of five small videos. That's what I was going to do. And maybe we might do that Sunday or sometime during the week. It's according to how I feel. You know? So I, I've done all this talking, so I'm tired. So I doubt if I do it tomorrow. <laughs> so it'll be Sunday or sometime during the week. I don't know. I, I just know I got these five little topics and I want to talk on those things and, and whatever. And I was going to invite some guests, and I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm going to tell you, quite honestly, 
I really don't want I really don't want to deal with guests anymore. I, I really don't want to deal with that no more. It, it's too it's 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 I mean I like it sometimes, but I'm not I'm I'm gonna stop inviting guests. If I go live and people want to come on the program, that's fine. But sending out invitations and stuff, I don't want I, I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to do that no more. So because it's it's not really see because you know folks aren't interested like that. Sometimes sometimes folks do things just like I guess I I don't know. But they, I don't think that folks really have no interest. And, I, and that's one of my that's one of my topics that I want to talk about when I get this together. And do those do those random topics. I, I want to talk about that. Um, I don't want I don't want to. Uh, I don't want. I'm gonna stop inviting people. Now, I, I still want to invite those who want to challenge this uh, this ministry. They want to challenge what I say. They want to challenge uh, the Mississippi campaign. I want to. I want them. I want them to come. I still want to deal with them. Exactly. They have personal agenda. You know, so I'm I'm not into that. I can't help you. You know, go go somewhere else with that. But I'm gonna explain, go more into detail of my thinking with that when I go into these topics. That's part of the topics that I wanted to uh to cover. I'm a lone wolf. I'm used to being a lone wolf. I don't need guests. I don't need nobody to be talking to. I don't. I don't need. I don't need that. It was Angel Snub Number Seven in 2007. It was Angel Snub Number Seven in 2010. Angel Snub Number Seven by myself. Angel Snub Number Seven. It is what brings the people here because they're tired of the the usual stuff. That's why you come here. People come here because they're tired of this stuff that we've been hearing for the last 50, 100 years. They just get tired of it. Because you see it's not going nowhere. That's why I am what I am. Because it's not going nowhere for us. And it's, it's sickening. And these folks get really, really upset when it's quite obvious. It's not me. It's quite obvious. It's not doing anything. That's not my fault. But they don't want to hear it. They cannot accept the reality of it. It's just like some of us brothers. You like a, you like a certain female or whatever. Or you might like a certain male. <laughs> And she tell you, I'm really not interested. Uh, I can be your friend. You, you don't like it, and you know you don't you don't want to accept that. When she said, I can be your friend, in your mind, I still got a chance. I still got a chance. No, she told you, I can still be your friend. She did not say, well, you know, I, I might change my mind later. You know, I, I, I'm up in the air or whatever. I, you know, no, she said, I'm not interested. And I just want to be friends. I can be your friend. But in your mind, oh, I still got a chance. You know, I still. And then when that don't happen, you want to get upset. She told you from the very beginning, I can, I can be your friend or nothing at all. Because I have a boyfriend or I have a husband or whatever. But you can't accept it. And that's the way these folks are. They see these things aren't going nowhere. They can't accept it. One day, 
It's going to work one day. Just like the brother who was a Pan-African nationalist or whatever the hell he called himself. I said, well, brother, y'all already had a, a hundred years. He said, well, I, I, we, we need a, probably need a, a hundred more. Like, damn. How long is it going to take? It don't take that long. It don't take that long to do something. No, it's, it's going to take that long because you know what the hell you're doing. It's going to take that long because it don't work. And they don't want to accept the fact that it don't work. When you're on your job and you have somebody that's not, not able to do it. It's not that you hate them. You dislike them. They just cannot do the job and you got to let them go because they can't, they can't do the job. Some of us, because we like somebody, we will keep them with us and they can't perform and, you, and they, they mess you up. That's what happened with Marcus Garvey. They don't talk about that. That's what happened with Marcus Garvey. Marcus Garvey was hiring and dealing with people that, that didn't know what the hell they was doing. Because they poor the organization, I like you. Business is not about like. When you are trying to have a successful business, you have to put people in position that can do the damn job. Now, if your wife, if she can do the job, then she, she can have the position. But if she can't do the job, your wife don't need to be here. Because that's your wife. Or your daughter or your son. They don't need to be here. Marcus Garland was dealing with putting people in position that didn't know what the hell they was doing. And you could say you could say the same thing with the Nation of Islam. You could say the same thing with the Yahweh being Yahweh and a lot of our organizations. We put people into position that have no experience, they don't know what the hell they're doing. And you keep them there. Dick in reality said, I noticed nobody talked about the shooting at Lakewood Church in the black community, but let a shooting happen at Savior's Day. All the black channel would try to profit. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. You know it. But that's how you get your views. It's all about, it's, 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 it's all, it's, it's, they've turned the, the struggle into yellow journalism. For those of you who don't know what yellow journalism is, yellow journalism is like the, the star, the, that star paper, uh, uh, inside edition, things like that. It's news, but it's not, it's not really news type stuff. That's all the struggle is. The struggle is nothing but a church. The struggle, they turn the struggle into YouTube views and entertainment. Nothing but a bunch of gossip. I wonder who so-and-so sleeping with. Uh, 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 polite is a scammer. We already know Polite is a scammer. You don't have to keep going. It's y'all stupid for keep supporting Polite. You know, uh, slandering gossip and stuff like that. That's all they talk about. Nobody has nothing. Nobody is showing their business. Nobody is showing that they got business in Africa. Nobody is showing what they're accomplishing. Only slander and gossip and nonsense. Because we're children. It goes back that we're children. And that's how children do. That's what children concentrate on. Exactly. Deacon said we are literally cannibals of our own demise. And for me, I accept reality. I understand that all stories don't have a happy ending. I understand that we, the uh, black American, the uh, freedmen or whatever you want, we can't even make up what the hell we want to call ourselves. I understand that really 
We are an unnatural people because we was produced by slavery. We are unnatural people. So we shouldn't be here anyway. And the, the actions that we're taking, we won't exist anyway. We're, gonna, we're slowly going to fade ourselves out. And that's, that's our fault. But then too, why would you want a people that's confused and messed up like us to continue to exist? It's embarrassing. You need to, you need to, go, you need to go extinct. And then once your happy ass is gone, those people that just come across the border we know didn't have nothing to do with rap music. We, we were the ones that brought rap music to the world. We the ones that brought the blues to the world. You gone. You can't say, oh, it was black people that, no, your ass is gone. You, you, you went extinct. So somebody else, we built the pyramids. You gone. You can't say nothing else no more. You have erased yourself out of humanity being a damn fool. And that's what you're on your way on to do. And next thing you know, these people that just come across the border in the next 10 years, they took over Mississippi. <laughs> you got to obey them. You got to obey the laws and things that they came up with. We we stupid. <laughs> they done changed it. They done changed it from Mississippi to New Venezuela or something like that. You know, they the, those people that just came across the border, they control Mississippi. We understood. We understood exactly what that that Negro way back in them days. We understood exactly what he was talking about, and they done it. And it looked like they they have the numbers the way they coming across the border and they get to popping off and reproducing. Next thing you know, they took over Mississippi. But I think that's what uh, that's one of the definitions of Negro. I was taught in the Nation of Islam that Negro, the G. In, in the Greek, I believe it's in the Greek, the G can be interchanged with the K or the C, which makes it necro. Necro means dead, and necrology is the study of the dead. And they call us Negro because we're a dead people. Exactly. The deacon says, and living with no purpose is death. That's true. You don't have no purpose. I live for God. <laughs> that, that's the purpose. I, I live for God. <laughs> well, you've been living for God all this time and look at the condition that you're in. Apparently, you don't have that connection to God because God should be bringing you life. And if you're a Christian, you said that God brings you life and brings life abundantly. But you're still walking in the valley of the shadow of death. Makes no sense. What makes no sense is this video because I only wanted to do 30 minutes and we going on two hours. <laughs> it makes no sense. Oh, well, I guess what had to be said had to be said. I thank you so much for joining us uh, this tonight if i knew i was gonna if i knew i was gonna talk this long i would have i would have went and saw me cast on on facebook and, and and stuff like that i thought i was gonna do just 30 minutes and it, it never works it never works but we will repeat it of course you know we'll download it to the other channels so those who miss the program they'll be able to to see it I thank you so much. 
drop down your comments, subscribe, share our, and that's another thing. We can't even share the video. I mean, if people would share the, the, the video, it, it would help out a lot. I mean, just, just share. But I also understand that people, people don't, I don't want to hear that mess. <laughs> I know how folks are. I used to deal with people in person. When, you know, when I was in the Nation of Islam, knock on doors, people in the street. I don't want to hear that mess. Get down. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. As soon as they see my bow tie, oh, I don't want to go away. I, don't <laughs> I remember walking up to this house. They saw me coming down the street. They let the dog out. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, that, that's one of their excuses, too. That video too long. I don't want to why your introductions are so long? I don't want to <laughs> They watch movies. They watch movies two or three hours long. They go listen to Minister Farrakhan. He can talk. I saw Minister Farrakhan talk for five hours. And even before he talked for five hours, they had to wait two hours. Before he actually came on the rostrum, then he talked for five hours. I think that meet that particular meeting, I think I think the meeting would it was over like three o'clock in the morning or something like that. It was a long that was a long meeting. Exactly. They can watch a game that lasts I don't know how long. It's just a bunch of baloney. Cause you comfortable, they comfortable in this. They comfortable. But also at the same time, you don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what I say. But then you have the nerve to try to challenge. How the hell are you going to challenge? This goes to show you how stupid these people are. They're going to challenge what I say, but don't know what I said. You don't know where I'm coming from. How stupid that you get. Everybody, everything that I talk about, I saw a video. I listened to a tape. I read a book. I'm not going to talk about when I. If I don't know nothing about it, I would tell you. I don't know about that. I would tell you. I, I didn't. I didn't listen to that video. So I really cannot talk about it because I didn't listen to it. I can't tell you about that book because I didn't read it. But these idiots have the nerve to try to argue and debate some somebody. You don't know nothing about me. If you're gonna if you're gonna argue and debate me, even the ones that do listen to some of the video, they still not really listening to me. They they looking, they hearing what they don't like. They're not really listening to me. They're just hearing me, hearing something they don't like, but they're not really listening where I'm coming from. One brother on Facebook, he was. He was honest with me. He said, I understand where you're coming from now, but I'm still going to ride with Elijah Muhammad. And, you know, the, well, at least now he, at least he listened to the video and he told me he understands where I'm coming from, but he's loyal to those teachings. At least be honest. That's why, that's why they don't quote nothing that I say. Because they, they didn't listen to the video. That's why they don't quote nothing that I said. Because they, they don't listen to videos like that. Like this Pan-African, whatever he's supposed to be, whatever. Uh, this, this guy that buy all his, view, all his views and subscribers. I thought he was going to make a, a wonderful video Show me, quoting me and everything and blah, blah, blah. He just made a slander video, a gossip type video. Because I'm not saying nothing that's not credible. I make sense. There's nothing you can really say about me like that. Just be like this brother. 
I understand where you're coming from. I'm still going to be a Pan-African. I understand where you're coming from, brother. I'm still going to be a, a foundation of black American, follow Tariq Nasheed, whatever the hell you do. I, I understand where you come from. That's what you need to do. You're still going to ride how you ride. But don't sit around here. You think you're going to bash me because you can't bash me. I'm not perfect, but you cannot do that. Not with what you got. Not here. You, you're not going to do it. How many folks have come here talk about they're going to put me in check, put us in check, and blah, blah. Do, have anybody even looked like they came close to succeeding? I let them come here and say what they got to say. I don't say nothing. They talk for five minutes talking all this garbage to me offline. Then they come here and talk for five minutes. Oh, duh. That's all I got to say. Duh. See, because it's different. Writing some stuff in a chat room on Facebook or in a YouTube chat is different than facing somebody, talking to them in person. It's a whole different ball game. <laughs> exactly. You got 5,000 subscribers and, and you met. You got 5,000 subscribers, so you say. Well, some of these people have all these subscribers, 50,000, 100,000. What do they do? What have they accomplished? They ain't accomplished and did a damn thing. <laughs> Two years later, <laughs> exactly. Still talking about stuff that happened two, three years ago. Like, what the hell are they talking about? So and so said, you said, I said that three years ago. <laughs> Where the hell you been at? In Mother Africa? <laughs> Where you been at? On the mother plane? <laughs> Where you been at? At the strip club? <laughs> Where you been? <laughs> <laughs> These folks, oh wow. <laughs> it's hard for them to let it go because they know they got their ass whooped intellectually. You can't you can't mess with the kid. I've been around a long time, been doing this since 2007. And I was trained and came through the best. I mean, you can't get better training than being in the nation of Islam. You you, you really can't. You really can't. The nation of Islam have produced some of the most woo. I mean, you, you have to give credit where credit is due. And that's where I come from. They even <clears throat> they even they even tell me you sound like one of those nation of Islam type people. That's where I come from. <laughs> Nation of Islam don't talk the way you do. No, because Nation of Islam is connected to Arabs and fantasy and fiction, hallucination. This is about reality. This is reality. What is reality? Look it up in the dictionaries. Simple. Look up what reality is in the in the dictionary. Yeah. You should have learned that word back in grade school. What you asking me for? But then they're going to turn around and tell me about all this science and all this stuff that they know. But you don't know what the word reality means? You should know what that is way back in grade school. That's your reality. Reality is reality. There, there, no more. there is no individual reality. You can have an individual experience but there is no personal reality. An apple is an apple. Air is air. A TV is a TV. What you do with that TV, what you do to that air, that's your bit. However, that's, that's different.
we have to start exactly we got to start from scratch and we have to do something new this does not mean that we're going to get rid of everything because that's not that's not possible but what you can do these these other things need to be revised so they can become part of the new almost like a kidney transplant taking a kidney from one person to put into another it has to become part of this new new body. You don't just throw away the nation of Islam. There's a lot of benefit to the nation of Islam. You just don't throw away the new Black Panther Party. There's benefit to those things. You don't throw away Christianity in the church because there's benefit in it. Just because you're too damn dumb to understand the benefits, that's your business. The Mississippi campaign is designed to use everything that we can get our hands on. Our, our homeless people, we're going to get them off the street. That's a lot of energy going to waste. Use our teenagers. Put them to work. And use our money, our resources to the best of our ability. You don't waste nothing. Nobody needs to be rich. What the hell you need to be rich for? Live it all hostility. I'm driving this guy. For what? What is that proven? You're, you're a nigga that have no power, but you rich. You feel you got something, but don't control or own nothing. And these people can take all of that away from you if they wanted to. How stupid we are. Like Oprah Winfrey went to one of those European countries and they thought she was shoplifting. She felt embarrassed. I'm Oprah Winfrey. They don't give a damn. They saw, they saw a Negro and they, they follow him around and think you shoplift. They don't give a damn about that. And you think Oprah and Gail, you think Will Smith, you think all you think I you think they don't really know these things? They know. And behind closed doors, you don't know what how they talk and how they really feel. You don't know. Yeah, a coon and a sambo. What the hell are you doing? You drink the same water as the coon. You drink the you 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 buy the same cars that the that the sambos drive. You who the hell are you to talk about somebody? You ain't doing nothing. You on Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg, Zucker, whatever his damn name, he runs that. There your happy ass is on there. Here you are on YouTube. It's not coming from out of Africa. You calling people coons or whatever. Then you get, then you actually get upset when they kick your ass off. Oh, YouTube is prejudiced. Uh, they scared of the truth. They don't give a damn about your truth. Especially when you talk about white people or whatever. They should have the right to kick your ass. You got the nerve. To talk about me on my platform, I kick your ass off too. And you ain't no different. I don't know how many uh, black YouTube pages and, and whatever, they kick me off. You do the same thing. I don't like what you said about Jesus. I'm going to block you. I don't like what you said about Elijah Muhammad. I'm going to block you. I, I don't like what you said about Minister Farrakhan. I'm going to block you. I don't care. You do the same damn thing they do. You're only interested in your truth, what you feel is a truth. Hell, I, if I was Mark Zuckerberg, I'd kick all that black conscious garbage off Facebook. All of it. I do the same on YouTube. I kick all of that. I call it hate speech and kick all of it off. Ain't a damn thing you can do about it. 
And the reason why they keep your happy ass on Facebook and YouTube because they see how it keeps our minds screwed up. That's why they let you keep doing it. It has no power. It's not doing nothing. Ain't nothing but a church. That's why they keep you on YouTube. Because I guarantee you, if they thought that all this black conscious, black power stuff was causing the people to really do something positive, they'll kick y'all ass off. They see it. They see that it's doing a, not doing a damn thing for you. Eh, ain't, don't bother. They keep themselves destroyed. They destroy themselves. And that's why your ass is on YouTube. I'm the only one. They really bother. Nobody on YouTube, nobody on Faith on uh, YouTube had a hundred over a hundred channels terminated. Nobody. I'm the only one that I know of. They was taking my channels down even before I had a chance to say something. I don't know how they did it. Well, it's their, it's their garbage. So I guess they saw me trying to do something. <laughs> I just made the channel and I go back terminated for hate speech. I'm like, damn, that's, that's how rough it was. Who else could say that happened to them? I just made the channel. And then I'm terminated. It's no video. I didn't get a chance to do nothing. Terminated for hate speech. I'm like, damn. Yeah, but I guess they got tired of playing the game. Cause I just kept I just kept putting channels up. So I guess they got just got tired of messing with me. Then of course, not only was they flagging me, as you know, these black these other black folks was was flagging me. They flagged me too. Sonetta and the Pan African guy and Tariq uh, Tahaka Bay and 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 the list goes on and on. They flagged me too. Still here, still still doing my thing. I saw one of their comments. How many channels do we got? <laughs> down the main one but see the thing the thing about it is my small channel still get the same views as the channels that had the, the older channels with more subscribers it, it didn't make any difference because when they took down my main channels and those smaller ones came back up they were still getting the same views and the same people was on those channels it didn't make any difference I, I didn't miss a didn't miss a beat. Still had Soul Liberation Day. <laughs> it, 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 did, it didn't stop nothing. I bet I bet they feel stupid too. And then I got smart because when the channel get into get into uh get in trouble, I just hide the channel. For, for 90 days and get those strikes off and just and then put it back up, make it visible again. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> anyway. We done. We did two hours. Uh, like I say, I had five topics I wanted to talk about. I was gonna make five short videos i'm just gonna talk about these topics knock them all out in a live stream maybe sunday maybe tomorrow night who knows it's going to how i feel because like we say on this channel um tomorrow is not promised to nobody so uh if i feel good everything is i'm ready to, to, to knock this out then i'll go ahead and do it whenever Whenever I'm ready, really ready, because if I wait till tomorrow, it might not come. So that's how we roll here. That's why I decided 
Because I was going to wait till tomorrow to talk about this. I said, no, I feel I can do it now. Let me knock it out. Let me have this discussion now. Because tomorrow might not come. That's how we roll here. We know, we know that the, tomorrow is not promised to nobody. It's amazing. I was diagnosed with cancer in 2020. Uh, April or May. It'll be four years, April or May. I was, I was diagnosed with cancer. It's amazing how many... Famous celebrities have passed, you know, in the last four, almost four years. And I'm still here. Uh, I was diagnosed with cancer. I stopped treatment. I'm still here and I'm watching these persons. Uh, one of the rappers that I used to listen to back in the day, a female rapper, her name was Boss. Some of you might have heard of her. She called herself Boss. And uh, she was 57 years old, I think, 58, and she just passed. Uh, so I, we send condolences to her family, uh, the sister that we know of as Boss. I don't know what her, her name was, but she, was, she went by the name Boss. She was one of the, I think she was one of the first female rappers on Def Jam. I think that's what they said. Yeah, Rest in Paradise. <clears throat> So it's just amazing. You know, you, you can't you can't you can't die unless it's your time. If it was my time, yeah, boss. <clears throat> if it was my time in 2020, I wouldn't be talking to you now. And uh I mean, I've seen my 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 one of my favorite entertainers, you know, leave here. You know, Michael Jackson, I never thought, I thought Michael Jackson would probably be an older person and he's gone. And I thought Prince would be an older person and he's gone. And Whitney is gone. And we just lost uh, brother Carl Weathers from the Rocky movies. He just, he just passed away. I'm seeing all these people, you know, during my, you know, it's just, and you're still here. I'm not spooky or nothing, and I'm not special, but I feel as though my life was spared so that we would have a second opportunity, a second chance to try to listen to a message that would take us to, a, to another place, the place that Dr. King described. That he, that he would not make it. That he would not make it to see. Because this is the opportunity. If we miss this, we're done. I'm very sure we're just done. We're done. If we miss this opportunity. Because of our arrogance. We think we know it all. If, we, if you know it like that, why are we still in the condition? i shut up. If you got it going on like that, I will shut up. You're not producing nothing. If you had it going on like that, there's nothing for me to talk about. Nothing for me to say. Well, I still would be talking against Religious teaching, mythology, fairy tales, these things that I still be talking about that. But as far as talking about all this blackity black stuff, if, if y'all got it going on like that and producing for the people and we're progressing, there's nothing for me to say on that. I don't have nothing, there's nothing but it's not happening. And these children, these young people need to know, don't get involved in it. So, you know, in the scriptures, it said, 
They was talking about the, the old folks had to die off before the young could progress. And that's exactly what I see here. These old heads and these younger folks that's influenced by these old heads that think like these old heads, they got to die off. Because there's a generation coming behind them. They're not going to be interested in all this stuff. Their mind's not going to be. They, if you talk to some of our people right now, they're not really interested like that for real anyway. They're not. You go out in the streets, they're not interested in this stuff. They only interested, leave me the hell alone. I just want to live my damn life. That's all they're interested in. They don't want to hear about the teachings and what you believe. I'm tired of going, going to jail unfair. I'm tired of paying all these high ass taxes. That's where they want to change. All this other stuff that y'all talking about, they're not even interested. Go on the street and ask people. For our God is nothing but a church. And that's all the people on the street going to know him. They're not producing anything else. The only thing they're going to tell you, Farrakhan is a good speaker. That's, all they, that's the only thing they're going to say. They're not going to say, well, you know, the Nation of Islam got this big factory and they're producing, they're producing cars. They're not going to talk like that. He's just a, he's just a speaker. He's just a, a preacher. A, a, go to church. Not producing anything. Taking in millions of dollars. No different than T.D. Jakes, Joe Einstein, whatever his damn name is. Ain't nothing but preacher. They nothing but preachers. We should be tired of that. It's not doing nothing for us. They make mockery of Dr. King, but he was a preacher, but he came up with these strategies, different ways of doing things to try to make some progress to change your life. And he didn't even tell you to come to church. I don't remember Dr. King talking about, come follow me. I've never heard that. Did you hear did you ever hear Dr. King say, come follow me? Did you ever hear Dr. King say, come to church with me? It was always about the injustice and the oppression. He never talked about, come to church with me. Put your hand, put your faith in the hands of the Lord. I didn't hear Dr. King talking to us that way. The Black Panther Party, just about the oppression, the injustice. They wasn't trying to put some religion and the teachings on us. And even Marcus Garvey wasn't doing that. After he died, they made some teachings for Dr. for Marcus Garvey. He didn't do that either because Marcus Garvey was a Christian. He didn't do it. But these people... They want to give you the teaching and the scholarship. You didn't hear about all these teachings and scholarship during the 1960s and the 70s. You didn't hear about the teaching and the scholarship when they got together to put Harold Washington as mayor in Chicago. I don't remember hearing the teachings and the scholarship. No, get the people together. We going to vote and put our man in office. That's what you heard. You didn't even hear praise Jesus or praise Muhammad or none of that. No. Take your happy ass to the poll, vote, and put our man in office. That's what you heard. And just like the deacon said earlier in the chat room, these have a, a press, they have a, these agendas, and they don't give a damn about the people. And that's why they don't like me. Because I know they don't give a damn about us. They just want you and me on their slave plantation. And I'll be down if I'm going to be a, your slave. That's what it's about.
They want us on their slave plantation. They don't give a damn about us. Michael, Michael Jackson had a song. They don't care about us. They don't, these don't care about us either. They're no better. Actually, they are the same. Actually, they are the offspring of them. They talk like them. They walk like them. If you take the black or the comedic or the Hebrew or whatever it is out of the equation, they sound just like the racist. They sound and act just like them. Because that's who spawned them. They did not exist until the races caused them to come into being. They are their offspring. That's why they they even use white people for examples of success and what you what we should be doing. Well, white people do this. Well, I don't give a damn what white folks do. I don't care what they said. You'll never hear me on my channel always talking about talking about what well, a white man do this and why I don't care about what they I don't even give a damn if it's good. I don't I don't talk about them like that. But you will hear them, well, the white folks do this. And the white man guy, I don't care what they do. Because I'm about the creation of my own. I don't need them. Right or wrong. Right or wrong, it don't make any difference. It's mine. Succeed or fail, it's mine. It ain't because of them. It's all about me. I'm, I'm the one. I'm the one. Behind the steering wheel. I'm the one piloting this plane. I'm the conductor of this train. You listen to them. They always talk about what the white folks do and they successful. They materialistic. Success is not materialism for me. I'm looking to create a brand new way of life. And it's not based on materialism. I want to destroy sexism. I want to destroy classism. Ain't nobody better than nobody. But if you listen to them, they still keep sexism, still exists. Even racism, because you know you're not going to get treated. Because when you look at them, the lighter skinned black people still, still run everything. So you still have to deal with racism. In a, in a different way because the darker skin is not going to be treated the same way as the lighter skin. You still going to have to deal with it. You, you see that right now. That's probably one of the main reasons why they don't like me. I'm too damn black for them. And a black person don't know nothing. Same thing. Still got to deal with it. Same stuff. But again, it goes back to, like Brother Harold Washington said, are you serious? They're not serious because they're not hurting. You have a black person, so brother, sister, get shot now and then, blah, 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 blah. It's not enough. They're not hurting. 50% dissatisfaction causes 50% change. 75% dissatisfaction causes 75% change. 100% dissatisfaction causes 100% change. 0% dissatisfaction, nothing changes. Nothing is changing because these folks are satisfied. I know what they say out their mouth. Actions speak louder than words. The actions show everything is okie doke. Everything is okay. <laughs> it's all right. On that note, we're going to get out of here. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments. Subscribe. 
share our our words with others if you can. I understand. Get out of my face. You're too black for me anyway. Get out of here. Black people don't know nothing. I probably would get, hey, look. I probably would get do better if I brought the message to white people. I probably would. I probably would, would get a better response, more support if I went to white people. Or, you know, if I'm alive, bring the message to, to those immigrants that just came across the border. Oh, well. That's on you. You had your chance. You had your chance. You, you know, you blew it. It's like some of us, we had an opportunity for a good, a good husband and a good wife. I, I'm still a player player. You know, whatever the reason is, you know, they, you know, they not, they're not worth your time right now. And then somebody else meet the, the husband, you know, the woman and or the, the man. And then you see them. You had an opportunity, but you blew it. Can't go back, can't get them now. They married. Doing pretty well. That could have been you, but no, you know, you missed the opportunity. You've been divorced seven times. <laughs> oh well. That's that's what we do. We miss our opportunity. I know I missed a good opportunity. Yeah, I, I missed a good opportunity. I had a real good sister back in the day. The only one out of my whole in my life that I really, really got along. I mean, she was she was perfect. Athletic. She was intelligent, smart, college graduate. She, but oh well. Missed the opportunity. That's how it go. And uh, never get that opportunity again. We missed this. We missed this. This period of time. Chances are it's, we're done. We're done. Maybe it's for the best. Thank you for listening. Jot down your comments again. I don't know how, how many times I've said that already. <laughs> We out of here. Uh, like I said, we're going to try to talk with us uh, maybe Sunday, I guess. Maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Uh, I want to talk about these, get these, uh, knock these five little, little topics off. Never put off tomorrow what you can do today. The purge continues. Also, the healing continues and we still want to try to stay in that lane to continue to heal and not get caught up in a lot of you know gossip and slander and all that dumb stuff because it does not benefit it does not benefit nobody and we're 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 adults and that's what we want to try to do try to be adults and be the best human being that we can be on that note, like our ancestor Dr. Cornelius used to say, is imparting, we wish you love, peace, and soul, and we are Audi 5000.